get Leo to uh, give us the countdown in the future because I love being here. I have here told him like, all games to do that. Okay. okay no. I'll handle that offline. Let's get into what's in front of us. I know, but you can't come I really want to make sure I highlight before we get into this series is we need to keep our eyes on this mid lane matchup. Sanjay versus Mumus is one of the best lanes that we are going to see against each other. Both of these people are absolute pioneers in building in this tournament and in this game. Very, very highly respected players. Very, very high skill players. Love to be able to see the level one from uh, TF's side here because I know that Mumus is doing a leash that a lot of players are not doing for their jungler to help them get that early clear out. We're going to have to keep our eyes over here. And it does look like we are watching TOS right now, correct? Yep. Perfect. We are, so yes, we we are, are watching TOS right right live. Absolutely. All right, so TOS right now. Looks like we got a very standard 0-0 start off. It doesn't look like we had anything too cheesy going on in the early game. Grux just standing still in the off lane, playing incredibly passively, standing there menacingly and ready for a fight. Who is he we, playing we against? We do have our Kalari pick here on the sneak. If you guys do Kalari not know, Sneaks is the premier Kalari player in this game right now. That man is an absolute assassin on this player. I would we'll say that he's probably the best Kalari player out there right now. Every time I play against him, I'm like, hey, don't sleep on that guy. Watch out. Look at this giant. Sure. Shout out to my boy Professor Loki, though. He's Grux. also very talented. Yo, <laughs> he did the triple jump and Grux just went right in and said, I don't even care, man. Get on there. Get wow. over here. That yeah, is that going to be a match of snowballs. Whoever gets the early advantage is going to really catapult into the lead on that lane over there. Not like a lot of standing in the lane. Gideon. This is really good positioning right here. He knows that the enemy jungler is probably on the opposite side of the map, so he's hugging the right side where his jungler is. Very smart stuff. All right, going to be backing up, getting poked down a little bit by the gadget. Ooh, we do have the double silence coming out in the duo lane here as well. I love seeing Richter and Drongo play together. Just a whole lot of time where the enemies cannot cast any abilities. Very hard to play into. Yeah, absolutely threatening, especially if that man lands the pole plus the AoE side. Oh, man. Yes. Oh, and me. That is going to be some brutal stuff. Oppressive. I know a lot of people are calling it the chloroform lane. The chloroform lane. I like it. Ooh, it looks like they are going to just concede this gold buff. Not looking to be too aggressive here. Don't want to give that first blood over. I'm liking, uh, honestly, I really enjoy, like, everybody loves the hype moment, the lots of fights. Of course, we live for those moments. But, like, when you're seeing 0-0 zero, zero at, like, 5, 10, 12, 14 minutes, that's, like, the true sign of high, high-level gameplay when there isn't anything ultra exciting going on for those, like, early minutes. Absolutely really posturing trying to get what positions they can get those farm leads see if they can get anybody out of position to get that first blood and get the game rolling it you know these competitive like teams they we they know protected. exactly how to play and what to do when you know that's one thing we were talking about earlier is they're going to play safe and make sure that they set themselves up for the win they are not looking to play call of duty they are looking to be the best team on the map they're looking for objectives they are looking for ways to get picks on people that are out. Like, you can see the Grux and Rampage going into the couches. Grux is going to get the uppercut. Are they going to be able to secure this kill? They are not. She's going to fall away into her tower. Rampage is not going to chase as he is level four. Not having his ultimate yet is huge because he is not able to dive towers as efficiently. They are really getting aggressive in the enemy jungle right here. I am a big believer that Countess jungle is the right pick into Rampage jungle. She has got a lot of great things that offset the pressure that that Rampage is supposed to do. Why don't you explain that thought process to me? I'm, I'm, I'm curious myself. Why, why do you believe that Countess is a great pick into the Rampage jungle? Because she moves away around the way that she does and she's able to get those quick picks. If she can get onto the Rampage early, she is able to assassinate him in the jungle while a lot of the other laners cannot. I'm also really big into Chimera, into Kalari's matchup as well, but we're not in that one, so we're not gonna get off that or get onto that and off topic. But it's I kind of agree as well, because not only that, but Countess, even as a mid laner, is such a strong hero when it comes to rotating and ganking, that if that's all she does, she has a lot of potential. Absolutely. The other thing that's really strong about her is you know that those Rampage is going to go for the early ganks because of that rock pressure that he has. That gives that Countess a lot of time to press that advantage and invade his jungle while he's doing that, because she is not looking for early ganks. She's looking to farm up early. 
This is absolutely great. I, I would wish we could get a little bit of a zoom in on one of these players that's going on right now. Ooh, Gideon how about we update over. this Gideon quick? I would like to point something out about him. Yeah, go ahead. We do have the tank crest coming in on Gideon. Be ready to see my boy, my college, the issue. I'm gonna, the have to, I'm gonna have to get my the shoelaces ready like spaghetti. Coming. Oh, here it comes. Be ready for it I'll tomorrow on his Twitch. <laughs> Look, you didn't tell me you had foresight, okay? That's a tactical disadvantage for me. I said, I said I had the insight, it's okay though. <laughs> tactical disadvantage, man. <laughs> he is out of mana though. He's just gonna have to be trying to poke up and push this lane pressure with those auto attacks for right now. This is the oh. first gadget we've seen today, and I respect it because I think like gadget is often ref not, it's not spoken out loud, but you could just tell by the picks. Gadget is probably like considered the weakest mid laner, and I don't believe that she is. You always tend to see the Gideon, the Countess, and the Howitzer, and if you're not seeing those, you're seeing the Fey get pulled, and why? Because the Fey ultimate is amazing. I just feel like I don't see enough of Gadget, and I think she's a really great character that hasn't had a chance to, like, really shine and excel yet in, like, a pro meta. Absolutely, and as she accelerates into that late game, when you build that Time Warp and you build that CDR, she is just throwing hats out everywhere like it's lids. She's giving everybody one. Everyone's getting fitted for one. Everyone's getting that damage right on top of their skulls. Hook, let's get some uh, player, like, uh, Cam moving up right now so we can kind of see a little bit of everything that's going on. Chad, how do you feel right now about everything that's going on? Let we us know. The, the Gideon is doing some good zoning over here for this first Fang Tooth. They're going to get it down. They are going to be able to se or secure it over 14. Gideon's going to use his ult here on three of them. Jump Jump coming in with his ult too. He's going to jump oh, in. He the He's after a them. big body. He's a big body. Oh, man. Gideon getting peeled away right now. Going to blink out over there. They're still picking up the fight. They're going to definitely pick that up as well. Oh, they're all still so healthy after that Fang Tooth fight. Would you look at that? And the Grok's not going to overextend at all. He's looking for the pick. I lied. He's looking for it. He's creeping. That's an orange boy. All right. Wow, absolutely huge for them. They only picked up two kills. They're down. Uh, so oh, it was 0-0 zero, zero Oh, Grix is going to go into their jungle. Is he going to get him? going to get ganked by oh, the Grix here. Grix is such a powerful character. Trouble here. He's probably one of the, the few people who could go against dead. a Countess. No chance. No chance. Man. Yeah, absolutely. Grix smashes that. Three 10 out of 10. kills and a Fang Tooth to start off. How many minutes are we into the game? Eight? Nine, nine, minutes, nine game, minutes. Finally getting first blood and first Man. Fang Tooth on the board. That's huge. Crashy has been on those river buffs like Stink on those words we can't say on the stream. He has been there right at those odd minute marks to pick one of those up to he make sure that they're like swimwear. Experience. He's making sure he's not giving that experience over to that gadget, not letting her get that mana region, not letting her get any of that gold or those buffs. Now that they got that first Fang Tooth, it's going to last a little bit longer on Crashy. Everyone knows how much Rampage benefits from AP. All right, we're looking at Richter just sitting in in lane right now. Try to get the XP. Staying within XP range is smart on him for sure. He's going to go ahead and farm a little bit while it looks like his Drongo is right behind him now. Grex clearing the lane. Gideon clearing the lane. Rampage clearing jungle. They're probably looking for a fight set up now. R Richter misses the hook over on that Murdoch. Let's get a little bit of viewing over on the duo lane. Let's kind of see the action that we got going on over there right Let's now. Let's do it. We're going to tune into Feppy because Alakinator, as much as I love him, his stream is a little pixelated right now, boys. For That's sure. Right. Oh, we got we got jungler going in into off lane right here. He's going to use well, his tank to really chase the Kalari. Does he's he have his rock? Across. He's got seconds left on his rock. Kalari is going to get out, but Countess is now getting attacked by this Rampage. It's frozen, but that's okay. Look how strong this man oh, is right it's now. Rock, rock. Rock. Let's go! Oh. Your local dealer is here to sling rocks. Hit up your boy Rampage. Absolutely beautiful. Execute. I know that they lost a player right there, but this is just me. That guy was doing a lot of damage. That was a lot of damage. I think you're underestimating exactly how much Rampage does if you think you know that why? he cannot I think of go the against word the Countess. Because I think of the word tank and I forget it's a video game and they do a lot of damage. Uh, Vire like, Blossom is a little unbalanced right now for sure with that AOE damage around him based on his max health. Yeah, it's with him sticking on lot. top of him, they were burning away. They do give that blue buff over to the Gideon making sure he's got that mana regen and that CDR off of it. Man, this tournament's hyped me up so much I might upgrade to the Legendary Edition, boys. Oh, you have to. You got to get those skins. Hopefully, you won't be able to get them in the future, and you can really stunt on people in three or four years when this is the biggest esport available. 
And that is another goal of ours here at Agora. We are trying to blow this game up. Get this game noticed. It is such a beautiful, awe-inspiring game. Not to mention, it has made me so many friends, and I've met so many people. I have so many good opportunities because of this game. If you haven't already, go download this game. It is predecessor. You can find it on Steam, or you can find it on the OG Perfect. Epic Games. We are trying to get the word out for this game. We want to see this game thrive. We want to continue these tournament series, and we want you guys to be a part of the community. Like I said earlier, if you have a favorite moment that you've seen while it happens, go ahead and clip that. It not only helps cook stream, it helps get the name of the game out there when people are going through those Twitch clips of the weeks, things of that nature. Help us blow it up. The only way this game can thrive is with the people that are in this chat right now. You guys are the ones that are here to watch this tournament. You're the ones that are the backbone of the community, and we appreciate you being here right now. We can't do this without your viewership. So thank you so much for being present. 100%. You've got that right. You know, we, we have worked so hard on this, and seeing this all play out like this is, is absolutely amazing. We got a jungle fight going on between Rampage and Steel here. Was able to hit the rock on him. Doesn't we look do like have... there's going to be much follow-up off I of know that. you were telling me about this man's rocks the other day, but let's be real. This man slings, dude. Like, I don't think I see him miss very... I think yesterday when we were checking out the exhibition matches, I maybe saw him miss two rocks in, like, a 35-minute game. He is by very... far one of the most dangerous rampages to go against. He does not miss those rocks, and, man, that demobilization for so long during a team fight is absolutely insane. Not only is he good with the rocks... But he is smart with the rocks. Absolutely. Crashy is a very, very skilled player. He plays around his team a lot. He makes some of the best guides available for Predecessor. If you have not found him over on YouTube, check Crashy out when you get the chance. That's Crashy with a K and the big muscles. Got a huge team fight going here. Grux is going to use his own. He's going to go after the couch. The couch is going to ult him. It's okay, though, because he is Grux. He does not die. He's got his, his Omni Vamp going for him. He's going to pull the... Oh, my God. The chaos. Absolute chaos right there. I would have stuttered myself. A little Jesus, bit too much going so much on to in that moment. Out. What am I even? What do I focus on? You focus on all the things. You gotta get your Mangekio Sharing gone out. You gotta. You just gotta. You gotta. You gotta talk faster than you could think. That's all we can do. Whoa, Human. Absolutely beautiful plays right there. That's gonna be their third Fang Tooth. Third Fang Tooth on the board right now. Every time we've seen a Fang Tooth break out tos has just completely swung it like absolute blowout they're not only securing the objective of the fang tooth they're getting all the kills as well they're slowly snowballing this game out of control and i don't know if we're going to see a position where the other team's going to be able to completely pull back i'm really pulling for faded here in an unbiased way because i love to see a nail biter but man are these guys playing exactly the way that they need to and you know we saw this happen in press tab versus Differ differential where the team that was getting the more objectives now, kills don't play a huge part in it, but man, every other Ooh. game we've seen a team go 3-0 on Fangtooth, it has been an absolute domination. So being 2-0 and on Fangtooth right now is putting them way ahead of the game. I do want to shout out my boy Sneaks right there. He was able to steal that Scion buff with the dagger on Kalari. Like we've highlighted before, that man is a master of that champion. That's got to feel bad for defenses. For you those of you watching the chat, if you do ball. ever get matched up a guy named, against a guy named TF.Sneaks, be prepared. Make sure your wards are ready because he will take advantage of you not doing what you need to do. He is an absolutely fantastic what a player. Great Richard, the hook. Wow. Nick. I wasn't even ready for that. And they're going to pressure onto this tier one. This is going to be, yeah, be able to push be first it down with the mid tower here. right here. So what an amazing pull by Richter with Crashy following up with a rock and them securing the kill down made to take the tier one. It looks like they're going to rotate over to Orb Prime here. 11-1 on the board and Orb Prime going to be coming up again. I'm sorry. A Any correction now. Mini Prime. Yeah, Mini Prime they're is gonna coming up They're going to be able to melt again. this super fast. Being such high level is such early in the game is going one. to be huge. Is this their second one? Is this their second they one? Chat, let us know in the comments if this is their second one already. I think that it is actually, yeah. I, I think that it is. is. Second orb prime. Really good being on top of that. They are so stacked on pulling that second orb prime. How absolutely That's be their first one. That's gotta oh, be the first, first one. one. It is. I don't think it's still fifteen minutes. I don't know though. I should I know that I'm a right competitor. Sorry, That's chat. It did look like probably it was know something. that, but 
We're trying Absolutely. to get you to interact. We know. We're just trying to it's make sure you know. Game. That's all. <laughs> it's a new game. We're all here. A whole lot of information to learn. You're a, you're a jungler, Mycology. That's that, that's your responsibility. I'm a jungler <laughs> in uh, League of Legends. I'm an ADC oh, okay. predecessor. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I remember that now. Yeah. Uh, ADC just really spoke to me in the third person MOBA. It felt it just felt really fun to play. Absolutely. I feel like all the roles TF are fun. I think that this game is just fun. TF what an enjoyable TF experience. Got picked right there. Going to be the only death on TOS right now. How does it feel being responsible for 100% of the deaths on your team, Sneaks? Oh, that feels bad. As we're bragging about him being such a great player, he is the one with 100% of deaths on their team. All you guys are really on scoreboard just backwards. Crossing. Oh, you're right, aren't we? No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. Yes, you are. Are we? Are we? The, oh, we yes. are. Yes, you are. Hey, now. You're a rock okay. star. <laughs> we're in team. D-O-S. Change the subject. We're not talking about it, Chad. Anyways. It does look like they are going to be pushing into the dual lanes tier one tower over there to try to take all three of the tier ones, really open that map up and not give TF a whole lot of room to move around and try to get picks off onto him. Oh, on the Gideon, Gideon here. Collapsed on right this here. is going to be might bad actually... for the Gideon. Is he going to try he and jump up and only? It looks die. like he is. He's going to go ahead and use his own, but he's got both of them. He <laughs> survived, though. He uses his stasis middle. Oh, oh, my God. Gideon punches. He dies. He dies. He dies. Clip that. Oh. Clip that. What a oh. by Sanjay. Oh my god. Whoa, whoa. I can't even talk. That is no. the highlight of the tournament so far. Even though it's something as simple as a 1v2 and for him to survive that <laughs> come out on top is absolutely nuts, chat. Get a poggers in chat right now. In I wrong? Was that 1v2 1v3? That Did was he a 1v2 triple against two of the strongest mages in the game. How beautiful. Man, and now he moved to Zoro and X. What an absolute monster this Gideon is becoming right now. That With was definitely oh. one of the best plays I've ever been able to talk about live. That was very cute. I like it. We love those Razorback Gideons. That just goes to show you We're that as much so as people much. like to sleep on Gideon and brag about Countess and brag about uh, Corpse is playing Gadget right now, as much as those heroes are strong, Gideon is such an insane character when you build him right. And especially when you pair him with as good of a player as Sanji, he is unstoppable. We got the I'm sorry, let me say that again. He is right now. unstoppable. Whoa. We got the Thern Fang coming up right now. It looks like Gideon is <laughs> zoning for it a little bit. Yeah, they're going to be burning that down. They got a yeah. huge lead, no question. TF doesn't want to participate in the Fang Bang. They're just going to give this one up. Man, you got zingers today. I stole that one from chat. Shout out my boy Pancake House Rules. <laughs> the Fang Bang. That's my, J that's my chat. Man 63, I absolutely agree. This is going to be absolutely crazy once they put the spectator feature in. It's going to be a lot easier on the commentators, the people running the event. But honestly, all things considered for a first run, yeah, we had some technical difficulties for the first 30 minutes of the stream, but it's been smooth sailing since then. I feel like this is a well-oiled machine. Absolutely. And once again, we still do just have an absolute huge advantage coming out. We do have the old prime spawning right at that 20 minute mark. It's interesting to see what they were doing. It kind of looked like they were looking to press it. 20 minute orbs are pretty hard to pull off, even with this huge advantage that they have. If they commit five people to it, they can definitely do it. Try to end this game early, though. Crashy's going to move in on it. They're, they're going to commit four or five people over here. Try to get this really, really, really orb prime. I'm curious if Team TF even has any idea that they're here. Oh, but as I say that, they start to show up. Here comes the big fight. This is going to be a huge fight right now. This could have been a risky play for them. Did they, they secure it? Down, a lot of stuff orb prime. What is the play here for them now that they have orb prime? They have an inhib down on left and a player as strong as Countess here is now off of the honest. battlefield. Can I be honest with the play is? Let's hear it. Go next. Go next. Absolutely. Go next. It's 17 1 right now. You're down in inhib the ore prime. Shake it off. Talk about it in your team chat. What went wrong? What could you have done better? Because I know I said it before, but if there's. Has anybody ever heard Vulgar Display of Power by Pan. Uh, by Pantera, because that's have. what I'm experiencing right now. I'm experiencing that album for the first time live for my eye viewing. Speaking of that, it does look like Team TOS is just going to walk it into the... Look at how BM that back is. 
Right that in is a face. bad <laughs> manners if I've ever seen one. He said, I don't care if you watch me. I'm going back to my spawn, getting more powerful so I can come back and kick your ass. <laughs> Over the law. Ooh, but Sneaks is getting a good little split push in over here. Lake is gonna come over, try to stop him on the Drongo, get that Kalari off, but Kalari is so safe with that invisibility with that triple jump. She can get out. She's got a pretty decent amount of lane pressure over there, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough to counteract two inhibitors being down for the t side of Team TF here. Ooh, gets out of the pole. He's an acrobat, that man on Kalari. I have to say, you know, Team Faded is a great team. Not to downplay them at all, but man, they are getting smacked by TOS here. And that's one of the things we were talking about earlier. This has been such an anticipated match. But you are starting to see that when you know your team and when your synergy is so well because you have played together for years, it is almost unstoppable. It is almost unbelievable how well they are synergized. And Team Fate is really going to have to come together here as they double ward the offlane. But they're really going to have to come together here and figure out what exactly they did wrong and figure out what they can do better next game because it's 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 a game against these two that is any mistake is your last mistake. Absolutely. They cannot afford to make any other mistakes right now or their base is going to fall. They may even be able to play this perfectly and have their base fall with the advantage that TOS has built up in this match. TOS is doing what's often known in MOBAs as the lawnmower method. They're not really uh, overextending into any team fights. They're trying to close out the game. They got the left tower, then they got the mid tower, then they move to the right tower, then they move to the next tier. They get a tower, and they you can see that again right here in the inhib. The lawnmower is one of the most effective methods because you're just constantly building pressure uh, from tower after tower and kind of extending your lead further and further. You don't need to go above and beyond and force anything even when you're ahead because the game will naturally play itself out. That count is tickling, tickling that Grux with that ultimate. My Lord, Grux is not a balanced hero. Even with a nerf, he is still contending like no other. Look how strong he is right now. That is absolutely crazy to me. And he's gonna save his goal! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! We're gonna see a Penta! We're gonna see a Penta! Get her, get a Penta! Oh, oh that, that is a -OK, okay though. This Grub showing why he's one of the best players in the game. He's very, gonna die to the core though. Are we gonna be able to finish it off here? Or is this gadget gonna defend? Minions. This gadget might defend! Oh, I respect no. it. Oh, oh, okay. you know what? Let's they, go. They That's fought a good the game. game. I respect it. They fought. That's going to be game one. Going out to TOS. Absolute blow out of the water. Wow, look at that. 21 to 5. And not to mention the four Fang Tooth diff. You know, going into this game, too, they really have to figure out, as TOS needs to know, hey, we did this, this, and this right, and this is what we need to do better. Because even though they absolutely got stomped, Team Faded has a very good chance of coming back in this second game, making it 1-1, and then it is up for grabs who wins game three. As we saw in press tab versus differential. Game one, although it is a very determining game in morals, it does not matter because game two is the only one that is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Winning game one gives you, if you lose team game two, though, it gives you the counter pick advantage for game three. And it gives you the previous two game knowledge with that advantage on top of it. And not all the time, but most of the time in the community, what you'll see is that the team that won game one and it gets forced to game three do tend to pull out ahead based on those two factors. All right. They absolutely do. It will be interesting to see how they switch their picks up. We'll see if they try to make any changes, see if they potentially get sneaks off of the Kalari or even potentially throw that Kalari into the jungle instead. I know both him and Jub Jub do play both positions. As always, we have Z in the carry position. Sneaks most likely going in offlane. Jub Jub in jungle. Corpse most likely going mid. Anor support. And look, we're gaming, boys. Like Ape Nation game. They are down. 11 kills right now, 31 minutes into the game. Vape Nation is down? Vape 30 Nation kills? is down 11 kills into the game right now. Okay. This is going to be yeah. an odd pick. It's not often you see Narbash in a high-skill oh. lobby. 
I, I love I the hate, troll. I hated Narbash when I first started playing this game. Honestly, I thought he was just a fat target that was super easy to poke in the duo lane. And I was like, great, be a giant body that lets me pull minions closer to me. But as the game and the player base has progressed, I've really grown to love this character. And I think he's actually really strong. Also got a really good buff in the in the patch that we are currently playing on that doubled his healing scaling. Oh, I know, dude. He heals like 70 per second, like 25, 30 minutes into the game. It's crazy. Absolutely. And see, and this is some of the stuff that I was very excited to be able to see because of the no mirror matches. We are going to fall into some smart counter picks. We're going to get play, uh, champions that we're not used to seeing like this Narbash, like the Sevrog once again here. I'm ready for this. I am so ready Let's get into this round two, starting up TF, Three, coming two, back. one, let the games begin. All right, we got some commentator bias coming on the mic right now because we're starting from TOF side. Let's see how they do it. I'd love to see a little bit of cheese going on right here, but I don't know if we're going to see that with the Severog moving into the offlane. Man, I don't Absolutely. know about you guys, but I love some of these animations when they're coming off these jump pads to go into their jungle. I think Drago's it's absolutely my favorite. Watch hilarious. It. Here it is. Woo! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I Who's absolutely the guy love who, like, seeing uh... Rampage just barrel roll into whoever it is. Imagine seeing a fat, green, muscular lizard coming at you full speed, rolling into you. Are you talking about my ex-girlfriend? Hey, now. Uh... No, <laughs> hey, we may be Eskimo brothers. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's a topic for another time. <laughs> All right, we're just seeing some posture checks going on over here in the lane right now. Nothing going really too crazy. I like the line of sight going on from Drongo, and he's got the fancy footwork. Uh, Gideon kind of moving over into the left lane right here. Just a little bit of your standard chilling. It seems that they're afraid of the invade with the way that they're kind of posturing right now. It looks like they're definitely setting up for this early game, getting some wards on the map, making sure they're playing safe, not getting early picked. As we see the Narbash had a little bit of an itch on his right butt cheek there, he's going to be looking for anybody kind of coming into their blue side jungle here. We'll see if they choose to invade him over here on his red buff or if they just let him take it. I know hey, Crashy does like to be your messages real quick. available. All righty, chat. We got Rampage going to his red buff here. He's probably... Do you think he's going to look for a level 2 gank, or what's the play for Rampage right here? I think the play for Rampage right now is to kind of hit his red buff. He cleared that pretty quick, actually. Uh, pick this up and look for a gank in the offlane early. But he's going to be level 2 as the Severog's level 1 while he's looking for it. Shutting down that Grux early. Look at that early trading going on in the Severog lane right now. Didn't expect to see that. Ooh, all that bleed and tick damage. Kind of really stacking up. Grux hitting an early level 2 on him. Very early level 2. We're going to tune into the duo lane here and see what's happening as they're trying to battle for CS right now. The battle for CS. Is a hard one. Richter is such an oppressive laner, especially with that passive constantly bringing that shield back. It really feels like you don't get to trade with him for free, even. Like, when the hook's down, you absolutely can. You got that 16-second window to do something about it, but that doesn't take away the fact that that man's one pull away. We got the Murdoch Richter. Again, such a strong duo lane. Tons of synergy. If Richter that lands the pole, you the will hook. die. Yep. Absolutely. Another another hard thing about this Narbash matchup, that hook is longer than Thunk is on Narbash, so the Richter's got the range advantage. You can really only be pressing the advantage as the Narbash when the hook is down on Feppy here. As we can see, Looks they're like going to play it safe. They're not going to... Yeah, they're not going to overextend here because they know that if they push up too far, the jungler is most likely right there. This is a very good team on both sides. We got a Severok fighting and bullying a Grux. Is that what I'm seeing right now? Get over here, little Ooh. bitch! Oh my god! We see the Severog absolutely making sure that he knows, hey, this is my lane. You're here because I allow it. I've spent a lot of time in the Severog side of this Grux v. Severog matchup, and it normally does not go like that for the Severog. This not is a all. hard lane to be playing into. He is doing a wonderful job here, being able to even stay in lane with that Grux. PTAB took game one over in the other match going on right now. We got a right fight now. going on in the jungle here. Big fight. Early game, level get... twos and threes. This is interesting to see how this plays out. The Countess is uh, circling around. Don't want to feed her early. Back out of there. Rampage. Ooh, oh, Sanji looking for a pick corpse. 
Remember how we talked about how people have your back in these things? Oh, 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 what a rat to get the first blood! Nix is gonna pick that up on this Everog. What so a rock by Jump Jump. He, Jump you Jump saw, again, not missing these rocks. You saw that he was about to die. The Rampage was there with the rock for any follow-up. The count has followed. And then made the best out of the situation right there with the rock going over the purple door. They definitely didn't have vision right there. Probably caught him off guard. And that's going to be an early first blood for TF. What a way to start the game. They know what they need to do. It seems like they had a good conversation about how they need to play this now. Looks like Jub Jub is on his game right now. Also, where is this Severog aggression coming from? Everybody knows Grux is so much more powerful, especially in the early game. They're going to start beating up on this Murdoch here in the duo lane. Rick is going to come out of the jungle. It's going to back off on Narbash. It's crazy to see how much presence somebody like Richter has in a lane. Simply him showing himself stop them from wanting to push i kind of like how much meta view we're getting right now like i think it's oh i think it looks like there's a skirmish breaking out in the mid lane right now let's get some vision on that what's going on with the wide right, screen everybody, gideon everybody everybody peeling away that man's got the fat monitor apparently. this man can see all the way to yeah, the he, off lane yeah he's got field of view <laughs> out the you ass. cannot possibly Ooh, gain can get a good like your mom with an eye in the back of his head he wow. is only level four though so those ganks aren't going to be as effective when oh, he's got the level advantage, Sneaks does. In what world does Severog win the bully war against Grux early? Because I guess Sneaks is just absolutely a cracked player in general because he's always, like, you know, he, he's a good player, man. I the think one thing really that separates... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I know that Defenses does play a whole lot of Severog as well. He knows this matchup really well. He knows that Grux is supposed to beat Severog. Look at just how see well! Factoring into him playing. Just, wow. uh, I'm not going to break down every micromanager. Oh, here comes the steal! Like, he Good still has gas. He's fine. Yeah, subjugate the gas out slip. of there. Yep, gets it out, and he is safe again. A lot of minion damage oh, coming down he, he, might blink in. he might blink in. Okay. Oh, doesn't she yeah. choose to go too aggressive knowing the steel still ran around the corner? You know, He's one thing I got it. to say he about, about Sneaks that makes him probably such a great Kalari isn't just that he's a good player. Wait, oh, he's going to get it! Oh, no, no, oh, the blink the saves Defensive's life here. But wow. Sneaks is Sorry to very you. great. No, that's fine. He sneaks is very great at ability management. I think that's what separates him from the rest of the crowd here. He's going to miss that subjugate. Steel's going in on him. He's got the He's wave, got though. shadow slip off cooldown. He's fine. The dash His is already down. Is He's up. out of there. Yes. No worries Safe for him. him. Able something to get back see, into that. Ooh! Something you see jump better. jumps low. He's going to get into the jungle, get that passive regen, but they are going to be able to pick him up. To one for even one those on kills the board out. right now. Something you're seeing better in the pro play, and I'm sure everybody who's watching right now has been in their game. See how these players don't just blow blink the second things get bad. They sit on top of it. They do what they need to do. Most of the time, I have noticed, especially in earlier scenarios where the cooldown timer for respawning is so low, they won't even use blink. They will wait until they absolutely need it when it's actually devastating to die. I've seen that time and time again where within the first four minutes, it's unlikely that they'll use Blink unless it's absolutely necessary. They know how important that ability is, and they absolutely. understand the devastation of not having it for so long, being as it has one of the longest cooldowns of any ability in any vid video game. We do have two of the best junglers I've ever seen in this game in this mode. To, to your point, if somebody blinks, Crashy and Jub Jub are going to know when those blinks come back up, and they are going to sit in your lane until you have your blink again. That's how you get camped, flashing 100%. early. 100%. And I, I, I can't get over the Severog bullying over here, dude. Like, this is, no, absolutely, it is absolutely he's not going to be gonna... successful in stealing the green buff here, but let's see how this fight breaks down. This Grux is definitely finally catching Pops up in power. He's going to have to back off. Really good shadow slip right there. I think the big thing that I'm seeing right now with them, and I want to say my brain doesn't compute because on paper it doesn't compute. You know what I mean? We're all in the same boat right now. But the way he's playing these trades is so good, so oh. powerful. It will take him backwards. He's getting on top of him. He, this oh. is, he's dead. He's dead. He point. doesn't he have the ultimate too, but can Severus secure this kill? Oh my god. Oh, the life oh steal is he going to get it? Oh, the minions. He's able to take him down. So he gets the long arm of the Oh, he dies to the minions. The long arm of the Oh. Those minions are so OP. You is not letting him survive that one. The Grux take on top of the minions, unfortunately, is the downfall for Sneaks there. But props to him for bullying a Grux at his what own game. What am I seeing right now? Like, I don't get it.
This is Several, nuts. He's what making a great this late matchup. game champion look like the strongest early game champion. How many stacks is our man at here? Can I, we, can I we was get hoping up? 69, but we Let's know that's get... not right. <laughs> he's not even. He's not even oh, ready God. yet. Oh, he is going to be such a monster already at two and one if he's not even to thirty yet. For those of you who don't know, Sephiroth does not fight. need as much gold to be as powerful. His scaling alone makes him such a force to be reckoned with. They're posture checking this. They definitely don't want to start it yet. It is 2-2 two, two on the board right now. This is a much different game than we saw last time. We got a big fight breaking Gideon's out right now. Gideon with a huge ult. All oh, right, Seal. Oh, they're Seal going in. Strong, Let's see if they're able to peel the Drago, get him safe so he can get some Narvaz TPS off. His best the whole to keep team is body blocking. Strong, That's the right call. That's the right call. Come on, give him the kill. Give him the kill. You need oh, uh, uh, The Seal's able to just slip out, and they are going to trade the Steel for, for the two. Gideon. Another even trade two for two. We won't see any Fangtooth going on right now. Looks what like the Drongos are trying to steal off. Game. Yeah, this is a much different game than we saw. A lot of people in the chat were saying they thought TOS was going to take a clean 2 0 again, but that's we not the way this is playing out this time. It does look like Sanjay on the Countess was able to get sneaks on the Severog. I'm not exactly sure where that came from. He may have chased him down after that big fight, but it does look like they did pick another kill up there. They did end up getting the Gideon after the fight. They're going to check Fangtooth. It doesn't seem like they're going to get on it. They're going to go back to their dual lane. Let's see what's going on elsewhere. Rampage going for his red buff. That is interesting because he's going to go for that red buff, probably look for a pick, and they're going to go straight to Fangtooth. Knowing these players and how they like to rotate, they understand the importance of these objectives. All, All right, right, so we're getting into a little bit of a lull period right here. We're about eight, nine minutes into the game, I believe. Uh, actually, much farther than that. We're looking at the 10-minute marker, I believe, with the multi-screen. But the thing is, is, like, we keep seeing these posture checks for Fangtooth, but nothing coming out of him. We just keep seeing two for two, two for three trades. Totally even game right now. I think the Narbash was a really good pick. We saw how quick he flipped over to the Drongo. The second he started getting peeled out, Rampage hitting that rock in the mid-screen right there, letting him know, I'm here, ready to go. Oh, Looks like Fade is going to lose that Fangtooth. Up. Yep, they lost Fangtooth right there. Is that going to be the detriment that you've been talking about? Is that getting that? I don't first know thing because the as you can see, they're micro, they're they're micro on on Severog offlane. Excuse me, they're micro on Severog offlane. He did get that tier one, and he is still bullying the grass. Look at him; he's going to ultimate back into the. Let's get a big view jungle. on that. Let's get a big Let's view on that. Let's get a big that. view on it. I am so focused on this that I'm not even remembering to do my job. Chat, this Brooks is insane. Is Oh, he's dead. He doesn't have Blink yet either. He's got he's nowhere to go. Oh, what? Mountain. He decides to jump out because of the... The count is... Oh, but he jumped yes, jump, 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 jump. He's not going to Blink in to secure that kill, though. He doesn't care. He doesn't want to wait for that ulted. big ult. They're still Let's... looking for it. The Grox oh, is absolutely one shot. He is able to finish that kill off. He's going to use his Blink to get out. He still has Shadow Slip on board right now. He's playing this fight. So good. Look at that! Come on, jump, jump! Yes! Oh, oh, oh what an oh, insane oh, collapse from both teams oh, here! Jab, jab, with oh, TF oh, coming oh, out on top. If no, it's exactly wasn't where to a be. Duo difference? I don't know what is. Break down that fight in slow motion again. Watch those players. How they dish it out. How they communicate with each other. He was low, but he never left his boy. He always had the follow up. That's Sneaks where the knew. difference is. Sneaks knew that he had to stay in that fight and make sure he didn't get low enough to just get one tapped immediately. He saw his rampage coming in, and he was aware enough to see the Countess. I don't know about you guys. I didn't see the Countess when he backed off. I thought he just dropped the fight for some reason. And then out of nowhere, the Countess came in, and the the rock from the from the jungler, Jub Jub, an absolute menace on a rampage coming in to help save that fight. He knew he needed to stay in that fight. He knew he needed to have enough health to stay in that fight. And that's exactly what he did, allowing them to secure that 2v2. That is also going to push them into the gold lead. They have a turret above the enemies. They have one more kill than them now. They are now starting to get a little bit of control in this game. We'll see if they're able to move it around the map and take more. And this Grux just does not learn his lessons. He's trying to Sneaks fight. Sneaks one more time. Is, oh, let's see if it, I was going to see if he gets that big baseball bat into his own turret there. I love that play on the Severogs. We also have tier one tower down already in the off lane. Green buff is off cooldown right No, It is on cooldown right now. A little bit difficult to see without the spectator mode, but that's all right. The thing that is like, it is just 
Is any, are any of my fellow commentators having the issue right now of computing the level of Severog power that's going on against the Grux? I am I only speechless understand. seeing this Severog. Sneaks being such a great player as oh, he is. Play in the duo lane. Big play in the duo lane. Little too high. They're able to get out of it. Ultra wide block. High. He was a little bit too high right yes. there. Yes, Chad, if you guys did not know, Gideon's ult is stronger the lower you are, but also it's a risk over reward because although it is stronger, the closer they are being the lower you are, the more vulnerable you are as the Gideon. Correct me if I'm wrong about this. I believe it only pulls you more the closer you are to him. Does yes, it do it's more not damage stronger too? in damage, no, but it does pull you more. That technically makes it stronger, though, because when absolutely, you're so high, absolutely. it's almost too easy to get out of. And it doesn't do so. enough damage to melt you immediately. I think of strong as damage, but I definitely see what you are saying. <laughs> uh, another thing that I think is a very interesting change about the Gideon ult in this game from Paragon is in Paragon, his ult was a cylinder, so no matter how high he was above you, it was going to drop straight down. It is a cylinder in this game. So it's a big ball around him. So if he goes too high, the range does get a little bit harder to hit. We talking cylinders or spheres here? I need to go back to middle school. Cylinders or ball or uh, cylinders are like tubes. Rectangular tubes. Spheres yeah, or right? balls. Yeah, yeah, spheres or balls. As spheres much as balls, I love chat. cylinders, so, what I love more spheres. is this subjugate looking out from the uh, the several no, right now, stuttering over my that. own words yeah. for the first time. Unfortunate for me. Commentator you know, this depth. game is just, it's its so crazy to watch that we're just having trouble putting words to it. This is not so easy think, to commentate over when these players are so good. players on the map, that, that makes it 40 abilities, objectives, minions, team fights. Like, it's mm. just the differential is like so big in every moment that can happen in the play-by-play. -play. It's just absolutely astounding to me. I'm just still really giddy over the Severog right now. I'm not seeing as much from any Drongo on any team as I want, and that's not a slight on the player at all. I just think it's the way the... We're seeing a lot of action in the off lanes, the jungles, and the mid lanes today, right? We've been seeing a lot of stagnant farming going on in the dual lane, which is exactly what you need to do to get ahead. But I'm kind of waiting for that big moment that makes me go, yes, that's the pick. That's what I'm looking for. I understand Absolutely. you complete there because... You know, a carry can really change the direction of a game, and it really makes a difference, especially when that carry knows when to rotate and when to be there. It looks like we're going to get a fight on Feintooth here. Richter coming in on the Narbash. Steel is going to ult in on the Drago. Richter ults to steal. He's going to get out. He's going to all. Gideon's coming in with it as well. 10%. 10%. Narbash. Oh, they're able to get it. Tie it up at one to one. They were able to steal it. Fade is able to steal that for a one-on-one. -on -one. Rampage, Rampage is going to completely destroy this Murdoch right now. This man has no chance. He needs to drop a mine and kite around it. Ooh, Not sure shot. what's happening right there. You need to drop a mine and kite around it. There you go. There you yeah, go. Oh, 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 can he get out? He can so if he tries. Oh, he is uh, not able to survive that grunt. With so the mini he to kill the fangs with those. So I feel like that is an even trade. That is, it is 11-12. They've tied it up on fangs tooth. And I'm seeing an entirely different game than I saw in the first half. I Very agree very even game we have here any small mistake on any team here is really going to be able to open the map up for the opponents so we'll see how safe everybody plays or if anybody decides to push down on that gas and get aggressive to try to make that mistake happen for the enemy team here what, that's what i was saying right earlier now? is that tf is a very good team they have a bunch of very smart players they have the adaptability and the game sense and just the overall intelligence to know what they did wrong fix it and go into the next game clear-minded and ready to play. All right, looks like we got some stagnant farming going down in the jungle and in the lanes here. Gideon waiting for some extra points, it looks like. God, I love this wide view here. Don't you guys? I do. I wonder how long it would take to adapt to play with something like that, being able to have to move your eyes all of the way over to the side to be able to see the side of your screen. Look, Y'all ever get those things where Crisp you like turn your head though. too fast and you feel something in your neck pop and it hurts for like two seconds? Yeah, viewing feels absolutely fine, but playing is a whole different yeah. story. I don't know how I feel about the widescreen playing experience. Getting whiplash when you get ganked trying to find out where those enemies are. My man looking like an owl. He's got that, that 180 head turn. He's like, oh, I can see <laughs> over there. I can see over here. <laughs> Does oh, look like he's got a, a swivel chair, so when he actually mid. has to turn left and right, he can look because <laughs> I doubt his neck has that much range of motion. 
For those of you that have been here since the beginning, I see we keep dropping down to 180, back up to high 200s, back down to 180. So those of you just keep tuning in and kind of doing the on and off thing, we got a great series on right here. Tell us what you think in the comments section. Don't be shy. Get that chat interaction. Let us know what's on your mind. Let us know what your thought process is. And I want you to tell me and my fellow commentators what your thoughts are on the play-by-plays that are going on. Did you see something we didn't see? Oh Let my God, a huge that. fight going here in off lane. As we see this, Sevrog continues to just bully. He's low, though. He's got to be careful. We're going to go into Jub Jub as he's trying to secure this kill, but he's going to get secured, actually. Oh, Looks like TOS is going to come around. in and collapse. Man, Sneaks, Sneaks, Sneaks got to get away. There. Sneaks Sneaks did not secure base. those kills fast enough. It looked like there was going to be a great pickoff there for uh, Team TF here, and then all, all of a sudden, all of TOS uh, is just there. Uh, unfortunate. All right, I'm seeing a level of difference right now in TF that I didn't get in that first game. I know that didn't work out for them particularly the way they wanted to, and TOS really capitalized on that, but, like, this is a different team. Like, like the, the, granted, it's a great team, but we're seeing something so much more magical. This is what I was kind of expecting out of game one. For sure. And, you know, TF, being as smart as they are, they know that... Playing against a team like TOS is not going to be easy. They know that, hey, I'm going to call out your mistake. And they're the kind of people where they could take that constructive criticism and roll with it. They know, like, hey, my teammate's going to call me out, but he calls me out with the best intentions. And they focus I... on that, they fix that, and they do what we're seeing now, where it's much closer of a game. I don't know how I feel about these Drongos rushing Ashbringer so early. Is your cooldown really that important? when how quick the team fights are. Do you need that boomerang? Do you need that second level of rad rounds immediately? Like, I would just, I think I would rather see from the ADC players going a more straightforward damage build because your team, as we've seen, and I'm not talking about just him, I'm talking about the other ADC also. Like, they're laying out so much suppression and body blocking and synergy all for you. Why not pump that damage out there, right? Like, why worry about getting small things like Tainted Rounds and the Ashbringer? Ah, we're seeing a fight break out over here. He's got the Crack Rock out. He misses oh, the Rock. Getting getting hooked hooked he's getting CC to death. They're going to be able and to get the Prime off this. Down. Yeah, that's gonna, that should be able to be an easy Prime secure with him without the Hunt on the side of TF here. TOS is going to take another advantage that they can take right now. Anything that they can. Looks like Sev. Once again, is going for that really doing well in early. His stats. Really, really early or prime once again by Sam TOS just, here. Once again, right around that 20 minute mark. Very impressive by them to always be there on time. And that's you something are I've right. noticed about them. That's that's like separating them from the other players in this category is how on top of all of the buff differences they are, but uh, Absolutely. TF over here, they're gonna pick up the Fang Tooth in response. That's okay, but I think the I think the Prime was kind of the bigger trade-off in that, right? They might Absolutely. actually not secure this. Ooh. It looks like Gideon's going to ult right here. Gideon's nope, going to get silenced out of his ult. They, got, they, they did secure the Fang Tooth, though. They are going to lose the fight. They lost but that the is okay, because if we go over to Sevrog, he is on their Tier 2 right now. He destroys the Tier 2 in offlane. Not only Everybody's did they secure that the Fang Tooth, it is now 2-1, and one, but he's also now pushing the inhib. Can he Ooh. get it? He's not even basing. He knows that they're on the opposite side of the map. They're by the Fang Tooth Pit. He can chip up a little damage, proxy the wave, take it a little bit more than I'd like to see there. He's probably not even afraid of the Grux, but he's leaving because that means if the Grux is there, players are sure to follow shortly afterwards. You know, one Absolutely. thing they got to watch out for is TOS is definitely pushing that left inhibitor now. They are in a little bit of trouble here because losing this left, in this left inhib is going to be oh, huge no. for TOS. Oh, they wow. lose that inhib. Or Prime really showing really how powerful it is. This was such a close game up until like the last like four to six minutes, honestly. We're starting to see like all of those little moments snowball into the big plays. And that's like really what's separating TOS right now from everything else that TF's doing. And TF's not even playing bad. We've been watching from their spectator point of view. And they've been doing a wonderful job. Hey, Lance, take over. They absolutely have been. Uh, it's impressive to see how much gold they're squeezing out of this or prime objective with everything they've been able to get with the tier two and the inhibitor falling down now. That is great map pressure that they are going to be able to push out.
It looks like we are just going to sweep some wards, try to be safe in our jungle over here for Jeb Jeb to try to get a little bit more gold. He is getting close to finishing up what looks to be that Leviathan as he's getting close to finishing it. Going to get that reduction on the healing for anybody that hits him with magic damage. Going to get a little bit tanky. That 5% damage reduction is very strong when you've already got the max health that Jeb 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 has on this rampage over here. But they need to be careful about where they are. All right, go in, Mycology. Go in, Mycology. Y'all too. I'm, I'm going to fall off, okay? Y'all go. It does look like TOS is going to move towards that mid lane with that last little bit of the Orb Prime that they have. Try to push up here, get the second inhib, get another bounty for what they have gotten with this Orb Prime. Push the gold advantage that they're building even more. Try to push their way into the finals of this tournament today. Looking to move to 4-0 and on the day. I know that they 2-0'd in their first series. Feeling very confident right now they have to be. Just clearing up those minions, trying to keep it alive. Absolutely. I can see that they're really pressuring this mid lane right now. And Rampage is doing everything in his power. We're seeing the Ooh, Gideon Ult come Gideon out from the top view. This could be the difference in the gameplay right here. What is going on? I'm seeing Ooh. the Steel Ult. Norbash Ult. Everybody's getting CC'd. Countess is ripping apart the Gideon in the back line. The Phoenix getting... comes out. Oh. No, even with the tower behind them, they oh, still no. lost two for two. Absolutely. That's a two so for two trade. That's not good for them, right? I mean, that's not good for TOS since they're the oppressing team. They are going to get a little bit of damage down onto the core, but the Gideon should be able to clear that up quick with some of the space rocks that he's got here. Kind of uh, hard to juggle between to the core and that inhibitor, but they are going to have to just give it up with that last little bit of prime fallen off off of TOS right now. They're making a push for the core. Are they going to be able to finish this game and move into the finals? I They're going to do it. This is where the game is going to end. He doesn't have enough to win clear. Steal. He's got to stop. Oh, oh, that that is TOS game two. is moving on to the semifinals. Being the finals. TF 2 This is the zero. finals. That was the semifinals. No, this is the quarterfinals. Is it? Mm -mm. Yes. Now it's going to be either Vape Nation and Press Tab against Team TOS. Oh, wait. This bracket is set up wrong. Excuse me. This is the semifinals. Okay, I was texting you right now. Uh, yeah, it's... uh, the, the bracket is slightly wrong on its labeling. Check! Tear me apart! I'm wrong! Tear me apart! <laughs> that was the semifinals. TOS is going to be the first team to move into our finals for the day. Waiting to see either the winner of Press Tab or Vape Nation waiting for them there. So we're getting ready to move into Grand Finals now. We're going to see a best three out of five. We're about to see a different level of gameplay than we've seen the entirety of the tournament. We've had some wonderful games, and I got to say, shout-outs to Team Faded. I know that they lost 2-0, but you can't deny that the absolute necessary adjustments were made for game two we saw a completely different game and honestly i'm disappointed the <laughs> sneaky sneaky on that severog versus that grux you know like this guy was really in there that's a fight that you should never win in a 1v1 level one and yet somehow he made every trade seem fluent and flawless